Salam Keluarga Malaysia. Hello and good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Azlani and you're watching Updates at Noon. Making the headlines today, semiconductor supply chain resilience important for national growth. And Finance Ministry to give high allocation to JBPM. A more resilient and flexible semiconductor supply chain is necessary for Malaysia to navigate a course towards a robust and sustainable growth. Senior International Trade and Industry Minister Datuk Sri Muhammad Azmin Ali said making semiconductor and electronic supply chain more resilient in the long term would help lower costs and make the industry more agile and efficient in the face of uncertainty and volatility. Dato Sri Muhammad Azmin said the Memorandum of Cooperation on Semiconductor Supply Chain Resilience signed with the United States is highly significant to Malaysia that the country cannot overstress the positive impact of it. He noted that his International Trade and Industry Ministry, METI, will be reaching out to the E&E &E industry soon to establish action plans to achieve the objective of the memorandum. In 2021, E&E &E products worth $455.7 billion and ringgit were exported up 18% from 2020 and representing 36.8% of Malaysia's total exports. In terms of contribution to GDP, the ENG sector remains a major driver of growth, contributing to 6.7% in 2021. The ENG industry attracted the highest investment into Malaysia's manufacturing sector last year, accounting for 75.9% of total approved investments, totaling 148 billion ringgit. Foreign investments, in particular, recorded 146.3 billion ringgit. Malaysian and Indonesian media should be fast in combating every arising issue by providing the explanation to mitigate it. In a more casual meeting with the top leaders of the Malaysian and Indonesian Journalists Association, Iswami, as well as senior Indonesian media leaders in Putrajaya yesterday, Prime Minister Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob also called on the Malaysian and Indonesian media to play a more strategic role to further strengthen relations between the two countries from the same ethnic family. Elaborating further through a post on his Facebook page last night, the Premier also expressed hope that Iswami, which was established in 2009, will continue to be the best platform in strengthening bilateral relations and cooperation between Malaysian and Indonesian journalists. The delegation comprising Iswami Malaysia President Dato Mokhtar Hussein, Iswami Indonesia Chief Asro Kamal Rokan, Indonesian Journalists Association General Chairman Atal S. Adepari, Antara News Director Ahmad Amune, Kumparan.com Editor-in-Chief Arifin Ashadat and Jakarta Post Editor-in-Chief M. Atafik Kurahman. After the two-hour event, Dato Sri Ismail Sabri handed over copies of a coffee table book entitled Ismail Sabri Yaakob, Teraju Keselamatan, Depani Ancaman COVID-19, written by the Director of Media and Strategic Communications Division in the Prime Minister's Office, Dato Ruhaidini Abdul Kadeh, to the delegates present as a memento. 8% of 495 flights recorded delays beyond one hour during the Hari Raya Idul Fitri travelling period. The Malaysian Aviation Commission, MAFCOM, yesterday released the initial findings of its investigation on flight delays by airlines during the recent Hari Raya Idul Fitri travelling period. 
Based on Mafcom's initial findings, it said more than 6,000 domestic flights were operated by Malaysian carriers throughout the Hari Raya Aidilfitri travelling period from 29th April to 9th May. This year, compared with over 8,000 domestic flights operated during the Hari Raya Aidilfitri travelling period in June 2019 prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. Mafcom said that for flight delays beyond two hours, the initial analysis revealed that 71% or 119 flights were delayed due to operational factors, including lack of standby aircraft, unscheduled night stops due to crew legality hours, and consequential late arrivals, among others. Additionally, the Commission said this was followed by technical factors such as damage to aircraft, non-scheduled maintenance and a lack of spares or maintenance equipment which collectively contributed to 25% or 41 flights delayed beyond two hours. The Commission is undertaking a further investigation on the provision of care for 160 flight delays beyond two hours to ascertain if the necessary care, as stipulated under the Malaysian Aviation Consumer Protection Code, MACPC, were provided to consumers. The number of new COVID-19 infections in the country for the 21st Epidemiology Week, ME21, which began from 22nd to 28th May, saw a fall of 4.2% to 13,076 cases compared to 13,630 cases the week before. Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Nohisham Abdullah said the development brought the cumulative COVID-19 cases in Malaysia to 4,502,579 cases. Commenting further on the matter through a statement released yesterday, the Health DG said the average rate of COVID-19 infectivity RT also showed a fall of 1.1% to 0.93 compared to 0.94 the week earlier. He said the number of recoveries in ME21 also showed a rise of 4.2% compared to the ME20 which takes the cumulative recovery cases to 4,441,702. Tansi Dr. Nohisham said the number of deaths in ME21 also dropped 34.5% to 19 cases compared with 29 cases the week before, taking the cumulative death to 35,660. Meanwhile, he said the admission of COVID-19 patients into health facilities, namely hospitals and low-risk COVID-19 quarantine and treatment centres, PKRC, for each 100,000 residents, also came down by 10% for the same ME compared to the earlier week. He also said that COVID-19 positive cases monitored by the COVID-19 Assessment Centre, CAC Nationwide, also fell with patients visiting CAC down by 5.1% and the number of new COVID-19 cases undergoing monitoring at home shrinking by 6.5%. The Health DG added that the number of COVID-19 cases referred by CAC to PKRC or hospitals also dropped drastically to 46.6%. The Kedah state government had to postpone the repair work on the leaking subsea pipeline involving an allocation of 50 million ringgit until the integrity audit of the pipeline was completed. Elaborating further on the matter, Kedah Menteri Besar Datuk Sri Muhammad Sanusi Matno said the audit needed to be done to ensure that the repair work on the pipeline from the mainland to Langkawi would be more efficient as well as to prevent new leaks. He said if there is a risk the strong water pressure will cause a new leaks on the pipeline if an integrity audit on the pipeline is not conducted. Jadi kena audit dulu. Jadi kepakaran itulah uh, kena proses uh, tender, kena buat. Katakan yang ikut prosedur biasa ni dia lambat. Uh, teknologi untuk audit uh, pipe tu kena ambil daripada Belanda. <laughs> Saya dah maklumkan sah mungkin lah peruntukan 50 juta itu tak cukup. Lebih baik kita pastikan pipe itu betul-betul boleh di-repair. The Menteri Besar added that the state government had also applied for additional allocation from the federal government to conduct the audit. Coming up next, first passenger flight using SAF to operate on 5th of June.
Malaysia Airline Berhad will operate the first passenger flight using Sustainable Aviation Fuel SAF between Kuala Lumpur and Singapore on 5th of June in conjunction with World Environmental Day. The company said the SAF powered flights from Kuala Lumpur to Singapore via MH603 and from Singapore to Kuala Lumpur via MH606 reaffirmed the national airline's commitment to a sustainable tomorrow and much significant progress towards achieving cleaner, more viable fuel source for regular flights by 2025. MAB, through a statement release, said the flights will be operated on the Boeing 737-800 aircraft using using a blend of approximately 38% SAF and conventional jet fuel. Compared to conventional fossil jet fuel, this sustainable fuel option, made from 100% renewable waste and residue raw materials such as cooking oil, can reduce greenhouse gas emission by up to 80%. Malaysia Airlines invite guests and sustainability advocates to travel on the landmark flights and guests can book from now until 4th of June to enjoy up to 15% off when they travel on these flights. The airlines added that to enjoy the discount, they can use the promo code SAF2022 upon checkout at their website. Guests are also encouraged to book as soon as possible as tickets are selling fast. An old bomb found by construction workers working at Jalan Taman Pusat Kepong in Kuala Lumpur was no longer active nor dangerous. Sentul Police Chief ACP Beh Eng Lai said the bomb status was confirmed by the Kuala Lumpur Contingent Headquarters Bomb Disposal Unit that rushed to the location after receiving a MERS 999 call from the public at 12.30pm regarding the discovery of an object thought to be an old bomb. ACP Beh, through a statement released last Knight said the bomb disposal officer confirmed the object discovered in the drain to be a white 40mm mortar practice bomb that usually was used in military training, believed to be from the World War II period. He also said that the bomb has been taken to the Kuala Lumpur Contingent Headquarters for further action. The Sentul Police Chief also reminded the public to contact the Sentul District Police Headquarters Operations Room at 03 404822 Two, two. If they found any suspicious object and not to take any action on their own to avoid any untoward incidents. The public is also advised to not speculate and cause public concern. Natural disasters, especially floods that hit the country last year, will be the guide for the Finance Ministry, MOF, in formulating a more holistic budget. Deputy Finance Minister Dato Muhammad Shah Abdullah said, therefore, through engagement sessions with the Fire and Rescue Department, JBPM, it was found helpful to the Ministry in providing better locations such as the acquisition of assets and infrastructure. Uh, sudah pasti Jabatan Bomba dan Penyelamat Malaysia berada di lapangan lebih awal daripada agensi yang lain dan sudah pasti mereka mempunyai input yang uh, lebih uh, tepat, uh, lebih uh, menyeluruh dalam, uh, dalam operasi-operasi penyelamat. He said this at the JBPM Honorary Rank Awarding Ceremony in Kuantan, Pahang yesterday. Earlier, the Deputy Minister was awarded the rank of Deputy Fire Commissioner Honorary by JBPM Director General Datuk Sri Muhammad Hamdan Wahid at the ceremony which was also attended by Pahang JBPM Director Datuk Dr. Wan Muhammad Zaidi Wan Isa. Meanwhile, Datuk Muhammad Shah, who is also Paya Besar MP, said the fire station in Sungai Lembing, which is under the construction is expected to be completed next year. A resident of Rumah Bonda yesterday admitted that the burn marks suffered by a teenage girl with Down syndrome known as Bella were due to hot water from a thermos flask and not from a water dispenser. Yasmin Naha Mahmud, 19, agreed with a lawyer Nurul Hafiza Hassan's suggestion that Bella was playing with the flask in the laundry room of a condominium in Wansamaju before the water in the flask spilled on her.
Nurul Hafiza is representing Rumah Bonda founder Siti Bainur Razali, who is charged with two counts of neglecting and abusing the teenage girl, causing the victim to suffer physical and emotional injuries. Testifying before the session's court judge, Israel Izzam Sanusi, the fifth prosecution witness also agreed with Nurul Hafiza's suggestion that she had told the police the same thing at the condominium lobby on July 7th last year. When asked by the lawyer about the cause of the water spill from the flask was due to a scuffle between Bella and another resident known as Balkis. After the former finished Balkis's face wash and snacks, the witness said she was not sure. Yasmin, however, did not agree with the suggestion made by another of City Binance lawyer, Nur Aminatul Mardiah Matno, that no water dispensers or water heaters were confiscated as the police officer who came to the condominium only took the thermos flask. She also disagreed with the lawyer's suggestion that her testimony to the court was fabricated and aimed at putting Siti Bainun behind bars. The trial continues today. After winning a historic gold medal at the 31st SEA Games recently, national men's golfer Irvin Chang is poised to take on even tougher challenges on the international stage. The 24-year-old athlete, who just went pro last Friday, said his short-term mission was to win a professional tournament in the next two to three years. The short term goal wise, I we'll definitely try to win a professional event first. Uh, doesn't matter if it's a uh, local PGN tournament, ADT, and best if it's Asian tour. Uh, but, uh, but right now, I just continue to work, uh, work um, in and out of the golf course mentality, mentally, physically, and technically uh, with my skills and just to further prepare myself for a uh, professional career. Because um, the professional scene is uh, not, it's not easy, it's uh, pretty competitive. But Irvin is all set to play in the ADT event in Indonesia beginning Tuesday and is waiting to confirm his entry for the second ADT event the following week. He plans to compete in some local events in Indonesia and hopes to get some special invitations through ADT or Asian Tour based on his performance. On the Olympics, Irvin said it is ultimate goal but for now he is concentrating on developing his career in stages. And that concludes today's updates at noon in our top story, Semiconductor Supply Chain Resilience Important for National Growth. Tune in to News at 10, coming up at 10pm on RTM's new channel. Till then, I'm Azlani. Thank you for your company. Goodbye for now.